Hi, in this video I'm going to talk a bit about how to train your brain to think outside the box. We're taught at school to think inside the box. If you do anything weird, your teachers will politely, hopefully, bring you back on track and box in your thinking. Questions are often taught as only having one right answer, even though that's rarely the case. For instance, when I was at school, scientists were only just discovering that continents drifted apart, so we weren't taught that concept, and it took me a long while to get the idea that rock could float, but it does. And there are almost certainly lots of things that were accepted as truth when you were younger but are now debunked, and that's ignoring any conspiracy theories. One of the main ways that new things are discovered is by thinking outside the box. Our modern day concept of gravity didn't happen until Newton thought about why an apple was falling from a tree. It, was just, it just happened before then, but he was, hmm, got to be some kind of other thing. And Albert Einstein came up with all sorts of weird and wonderful ideas that still form the basis of a lot of science, and he did that by letting his imagination roam wild. Something that's at odds with thinking inside the box, but you don't have to be a scientist to develop your outside-the-box brain thinking skills. Artists do it. Surrealism and abstract art are probably the most extreme cases. One musician I listen to writes music that doesn't, in quote marks, work if you look at the score, but plays perfectly when you listen to it. And with that particular artist, I'm not sure how much their thinking was enhanced by other things, but that doesn't stop their work from being good to listen to. So, how can you train your brain to think outside the box more often, regardless of the area you want to break free from your current boundaries? There are lots of exercises online that will help. One of my favourites is having a conversation without using the letter E, and that's because E is a very common letter. And ignoring the letter in quote marks, I used it five times in just that previous short sentence. Don't play that for too long at first, otherwise your brain will just start to ache. There's also a game I played when I was younger where each player says a word in turn, but the next word can't be related to the previous word, or must be related to it, or can't involve anything made from wood, or lots of other rules you make those up as you go along. And all those are simple and cause you to think outside the box, even if it's only for a few seconds. And those few seconds are good because they push the boundaries of your brain, even if it's only briefly. Our brain isn't like a rubber band. It doesn't spring back to its original size at the first available opportunity. It's difficult to describe exactly what our brain does when it's stretched, but it's closer to building up muscle. It stretches and then continues to fill the new space when it's created. The neurons in our mind that connect up our thoughts are they lots and lots of those connections. We don't really know how many estimates vary from lots, a hundred trillion, to even more, a thousand trillion. That's a, a big difference, hundred times. And those numbers will vary from person to person. But even if it's a lower figure, the, the numbers are difficult to comprehend. I find it difficult, very difficult to... I haven't got a clue what a trillion is, really. Just know it's big. So thinking outside the box is likely to push up the number of your connections. and. It's difficult for scientists to study precisely, as we're not currently capable of monitoring exactly what's happening inside our minds. Although we're getting closer with machine learning, and that's where computers work out their own rules, Google does it a lot, even though the skills are still in their infancy. It does it for its language translate, it does it to work out basically what page to show you when you put your results in, even if you don't give it many clues. Um, one thing I like to do to stretch my brain and force it to think, hopefully outside the box, is to ask questions. It could be fairly dumb ones. I remember reading years ago that McDonald's had something, I think it was 27 stages in their restaurants cooking their fries. And I tried to work out what all those could be. Didn't get to 27, I think I got about 15 or so. Sat-navs and their app equivalent store about a hundred different items for every single point they have, and again, struggled to come up with more than a handful of items, but it was a nice brain stretch, and I still think about it occasionally to say, what else could they be storing? So train your brain to question facts and figures by asking why, or mentally just taking the lid off the often bland statements like kills 99.9% .9 of germs. How do we get to that figure? And given the small size of germs and the large quantity there are of them, what happens to the remainder? And regardless of how many are killed, how long does it take for a new batch to arrive? Set aside a bit of time each day to investigate that kind of question. Probably put a timer on your phone as well to stop going off for hours on it. But whatever takes your fancy, because it's the thought that counts, literally. The more you ask your brain to think outside whatever box you've previously contained it in, the more it will think that thinking outside the box is normal. 
which makes those kind of exercises a virtuous circle. One other way I'd like to think outside the box is by listening to a self-help track. Normally, for me, that would be hypnosis, but because I don't like to get stuck in a rut, I chose subliminal messages to work alongside my mind and get it thinking from different angles. Also, did what I often do with subliminal messages. I looked for studies that prove one way or the other whether they work, and yeah, that's difficult. You can't do like the shampoo adverts and use subliminals on one half of your brain but not on the other, and then compare the results. At least, not with living people. So the results are closer to hearsay than they are to science. But that doesn't mean subliminals don't work. I've noticed my mind stretching itself more and more since I played myself the track. Maybe you could do the same. So check the link below this video and test the idea for yourself. It's interesting and report back, use the comments section to put down any section, anything that you've got that you've used to train your brain to think outside the box. I really look forward to hearing from you on that. But try the subliminals as well, they're quite fun. Thanks for watching.